Hi everybody, John Liebman here. This is for BassPlayersOnly.com. Today we're talking to a uh, heavy metal icon of Rob Zombie fame and of Ozzy Osbourne fame, Rob Blasco Nicholson. Hey Blasco. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Well, good. Great to be talking with you. I, I want to uh, find out about uh, some of the stuff that you've done, but I'd like to begin right at the beginning, if we can. Now, you grew up in California, right? In L.A.? Born and raised, yes, sir. Well, that's uh, quite an interesting place to grow up. I'd be interested to hear what kind of musical upbringing you had. Um, well, I mean... Uh, I mean, I think the first time I saw a Kiss record, that's pretty much what I wanted to do. Um, but I mean, in terms of mu like musical upbringing, you know, my parents were supportive and they um, and they paid for drum lessons and bass lessons and you know bought me drum sets and bass amps and you know and stuff. So that they, you know they they were definitely supportive of of that thing. And, um, but it, it kind of started motoring pretty quick. Um, and they were supportive of that too. I mean, I, you know, I started playing drums at an early age and, um, that kind of went nowhere really. I mean, it was fun, you know, but, uh, that kind of went nowhere. So I switched over to bass in my, um, early teens and, um, and then, you know, I did that for a little while, and then I just started jamming in bands, and then I got in the band that got a record deal when I was, like, 15, and we started putting out records and going on tour, you know, when I was 16 years old. So I was still, you know, living at home with the parents and stuff at that point. This was, you know, this was 80, 1986, and, you know, at that point, you'd go on tour, and it'd be like, okay, see you in a week or two weeks or however long we were going out. And there, it wouldn't be like a, we had cell phones or internet connections. It was yeah. like you'd have to scrape up change to put in a, a pay phone to call home, you know? So yeah. so they were pretty supportive at an early age of me and, you know, my band dudes renting a van and going out on tour and with no real communication. I mean, in hindsight, you know, the... the <laughs> <laughs> in hindsight, the fact that we even, you know, survived um, that thing is, I mean, you got to figure this is mid-80s and we were like a sort of a punk rock speed metal band. And I mean, I think looking back on it, a lot of the situations that we were in were relatively dangerous. And um, so, uh, you know, stuff that I, I wouldn't even consider doing now, you know, we slept on strangers' floors and, <laughs> and stuff. So, so my musical, my long-winded answer, my musical upbringing was, you know, up in it. You know, we, 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 I just, at a very early age, was lucky enough to really experience what it is and um, just, just kind of went for it. And then, you know, and then after, I mean, we were all in high school, you know, for, for the longevity of that band. Um, and then whenever we all graduated, we kind of just went our own ways. Like, you know, dude went to college, dude got married, and dude moved to up north and stuff. And I just kind of stuck with it. And, and, um, and then, you know, just sort of graduated, you know, up the heavy metal ranks of hired gun bass players from that point and ended up, you know, at the, at the top of the heap right now. So, um, that's, that's my musical upbringing. Wow. Well, uh, going back a little bit after the drums and uh, you know, the other stuff that you mentioned, what what was it that attracted you to the bass? Uh, well, uh, very strategically, it was the fact that everyone that I knew was either a drummer or a guitar player. So I figured, well, if, I'm a, if I pick up bass, then there'll be bands that I can get in because it seemed like there was there was an overwhelming amount of people to play guitar or drums, but there wasn't a lot of people that played bass. So I figured, well, if I play bass, then maybe I'll be able to get in some bands. Funny how that works. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how so many bass players have shared that uh, very similar story. Yeah. Well, what about, I think you may have touched on it, but how did you gravitate toward the whole heavy metal scene and the culture and everything that goes along with that? That's what I've always like I mean it from the first 
moment I made my parents buy me a Kiss record, there was there was no there was no looking back ever. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, and I, and I you know, and I graduated into like you know things like ACDC and Led Zeppelin and, and all the classic stuff. But when Metallica and Slayer came out, that was it. You know, that the, that was like I was like, yep, this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. Why do they call you Blasco, by the way? What does that mean? Uh, just a nickname. You know, it's um, just it's sort of uh, acquired from the uh, Rob Zombie days and um, just something that stuck and, you know, just kind of sets me apart. There's only, there's only one of me, so whenever I'm, call, you know, whenever I'm calling, like, you know it's me and you, you're not confusing me with, uh, you know, ten other Robs that you may know. Yeah. yeah. Nobody says Blasco who? Yeah, nope, never. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned Rob Zombie. Tell me about that gig. What was that like? It was great, man. I mean, it was um, at the time when I got the phone call to, to do the gig, I was working, you know, I was working two jobs. I was, you know, I was working in, I was like between music gigs, right? So I was like, Talking used clothes in some vintage store, and then by high time I was bartending at this bar. So I was working, you know, I was working a lot. I was doing two two jobs, double duty, and and um, you know, just surviving. And um, and then I got the call to join that, and that changed my life considerably. I mean, uh, you know, I was in his band for eight years, and I learned a lot about the business and. Um, and it was it was a really great period, I and mean, we we did some really cool stuff, and and um, it uh, and so yeah, it was it was a remarkable time, and I'm definitely very very um, gracious of having the opportunity to do that. Because like I said, it was the it was the the catalyst to um, to do everything that I'm doing now, whether it's playing an Aussie band or managing bands or you know just all the things that I'm doing. That's that was. That was the big part of the process. I mean, if it wasn't for, for that gig, it's, it's hard to say um, what I'd be doing now. I'd probably still be bartending and selling used clothes. So <laughs> I'm glad that, uh, that that didn't happen. Yeah, as are the rest of us. Well, who was in the band at the time? Were there a lot of different players throughout that eight-year period, or was it a pretty stable cadre of musicians? No, the, the first, the first um, run at it, it was... You know, it was the and it was the Rob Zombie band, and then we took a little break for him to go make some movies and stuff. And then um, whenever it, it, uh, he fired it back up, it was uh, me and, and Rob, obviously. And then um, we had a, two new guys. We had John Five was playing guitar, and Tommy Clefettis was playing drums. And um, so that you know that was the, the shift um, after the after the movie break. Um, but it's, you know. But both areas were, uh, were fun. Yeah, it, was, it was a good time. This is for bassplayersonly.com.